Hello. Welcome to our special edition Office Hours on Google Checkout. My name is Mihai Ernescu. I'm a developer advocate on Google Wallet. And following our recent announcement about uh, Google uh, Checkout Retirement, uh, we wanted to give developers and merchants more information about the process, more details, and uh, answer any relevant questions. With me today, we have Justin Lawyer, Senior Product Manager on Google Wallet, and Michael Hogan, uh, Payments Operations Specialist on Wallet. So let's get started. First, uh, Justin will walk you through the major things uh, you should know, and then we'll answer questions from the moderator. Yep. Um, so let's switch to the slide deck. Okay. So we have a quick presentation here to help you um, understand what this retirement means for you as a Google Checkout merchant. Um, so the first things we want everybody to, to understand is that there are, th there are three things. First, you can still process payments through Google Checkout uh, for the next six months. You'll be able to charge orders until November 20th. Um, the second thing that we'd like you to understand is that we've partnered with Best of Breed uh, e-commerce solutions partners to be able to help you with the transition um, to help make that a more seamless experience for you. The third thing that we want to make sure that uh, you understand is that you can contact us at any time during this migration for questions and to help answer any questions that you have. Um, for the agenda today, we first wanted to clarify, we've heard a number of questions about what is Google Wallet versus Google Checkout, and so we wanted to clarify the 7th. Um, and then December 20th is the last day for merchants to initiate refunds for those checkout orders. For the migration options, uh, there are basically two classes of, of options for you as a merchant. If you choose to use um, Google Wallet Instant Buy, um, that is an offering for you that um, offers a, an optimized mobile solution, and you will need to have a separate payment processor for you. Um, if you are using du digital go uh, goods, you can migrate to that offering. If you would choose to use one of our partners, you can migrate to Braintree um, for payment processing or any other processor that you choose. Um, They're offering discounted processing for you. Uh, Shopify has uh, discounted plans if people would like a hosted storefront. And FreshBooks is offering um, an online invoicing solution for anybody that needs invoicing. Uh, for the next part of the agenda, there, was a number, there were a number of questions about digital goods merchants using Google Checkout. So, um, First of all, we want to basically clarify that uh, sellers of digital goods are largely unaffected. Um, users of Google Play, Google Web Store, the Offers Marketplace, and the Google Wallet for digital goods, um, the only change that they will really see is they will be using the Google Wallet, the new Google Wallet Merchant Center. Um, so that will basically be fairly transparent. Um, for those merchants using Google Play or other in, um, Google properties, that are also using the Google Checkout Notifications and Order Report APIs, um, they will need to migrate to the replacement. Thank you, Justin. Um, so now let's get to the fun part, answering questions from the moderator. Uh, we have, I have the list in front of me here, and uh, I'll <coughs> go to the question, and then we'll find someone uh, who knows the best answer. So let's start with the first one. The first question is, didn't Google migrate all Google Checkout users to Google Wallet in uh, 2011. So, Justin, I think you okay. quick, briefly covered it, but yeah. can you elaborate? So this is a very good question. We get asked this um, frequently, actually. And yes, we in the in 2011 we migrated the all uh, buyers on Google to a single Google Wallet unified experience. So mm -hmm. that way, all buyers had the exact same experience, and they knew what to expect whenever they saw the Pay with Google mm -hmm. button. Um, the Ch the, the merchant solutions, whether that was Google Wallet for digital goods or Checkout or Google Play, were distinct and different for each of those. And so those were continuing under their different names. OK. Next question is about the Google Checkout API. So I think I'll take that one. <laughs> it's uh, my area. The question is, I have a Google Checkout API which gives me notifications to unlock digital goods. I made no changes to my code when checkout became wallet. It still works. From my perspective, wallet is just a risk in checkout. Um, so the question kind of relates a little bit to um, what Justin just talked about. Um, 
from the developer's description here, I take it that he or she is using the digital delivery option on Google Checkout, which is a nice API. Uh, unfortunately, that will go away when we retire Google Checkout. Uh, the good news is there is a replacement. We have the Google Wallet for Digital Goods API, which is uh, very nicely suited to deliver digital content, uh, digital um, goods to your customers. You will need to do a little bit of programming on your website because it sounds like you are nicely integrated and uh, you are probably using uh, some key to unlock the digital goods. So the Digital Goods API, it's a nice processing option for you and with a little bit of work on the website uh, you should be good to go and have a nice replacement. Uh, there are also alternatives out there. You can look uh, at Braintree which has uh, also a nice solution for uh, digital goods. So keep us uh, sending us questions if you have trouble but I think with uh, just a few days of work uh, you should be able to nicely switch to the new solution. Okay the next question what are the discounted transactions fees from Google Partners? Uh, I'll take this one. So we announced a few days ago that Checkout uh, will be retired and uh, in that announcement we also provided options for existing merchants and developers. And uh, out of those uh, I want to emphasize uh, Braintree, which uh, is one of our partners, which is offering uh, very uh, substantial discounts, especially if you have large volume sales. We can, do we have it on the website? Can we switch to the Braintree website? And uh, the entry level rates are 2.7% plus, uh, I think the Braintree website is, should be, yep. The Braintree website, uh, we have links from the Merchant Center and we can go to each one of our partners and uh, sign up for their special rates. So Braintree has 2.7% plus 30 cents, that is the entry level rate. Uh, then Shopify, which um, offer an uh, entire hosted uh, store solution, uh, offers 20% of all their plans. Or if you're using Invoice primarily, you may want to consider FreshBooks, uh, which has a 60-day free trial. Uh, so lots of options for you depending on the uh, specific uh, processing uh, platform and specific processing needs that uh, you have. Um, so to recap, go to the Merchant Center and you will have all the information there. All right, next question. I'll give it to someone else. Uh, is Google Wallet Instant Buy the only other Google provided option for receiving and processing payments? How cost will differ between the two products? So Michael, you're the uh, expert in this area. Sure. Can you elaborate? So we do have another product, uh, Google Wallet for Digital Goods, mm -hmm. that's exclusively for digital goods merchants. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it's a web-based solution and we have actually pretty competitive pricing. So it's 5% per transaction mm -hmm. or 1.9% plus 30 cents per transaction, uh, whichever is cheaper. Whichever is better, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm glad you brought up, or the question brought up Instant Buy. Uh, it's, it's a great product, but certainly isn't a one-to-one -one replacement for Google Checkout. Mm -hmm. uh, Instant Buy partners are required to have their own processing capabilities. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, it's not a great fit for a lot of Google Checkout merchants. Also for that reason, it, it's a free service. Mm -hmm. um, all of the payments go to, or excuse me, any sort of fees associated would be with their proprietary mm -hmm. um, credit card processor, and we just offer the service for free. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple options out there from what you're telling me. It's, you can, if you have digital goods, you can just switch to Google Wallet for digital goods yep. and use uh, our very uh, competitive pricing structure. Or if you have a um, payment processor or if you plan to use a new payment processor, Google Wallet Instant Buy is a good option. Absolutely. So it's, it's free from Google and then you will be charged whatever your payment processor charges you. Absolutely. And you can use Brainsy for example. Yep. Yeah. Great, thank you, Michael. Let's move on. Next question. The question is, as a merchant retailer of electronic physical goods, will we be able to use Google Wallet as a payment processor in place of Google Checkout? So, Michael, I think that's also <laughs> down your alley. <laughs> Happy to take this question. Um, no, the answer is that we no longer offer a solution for processing of physical goods or accepting payments for physical goods or services. Uh, for that reason, we've chosen these uh, three partners. They're well regarded in the payments industry, and so um, if payment processing needs to be replaced, for example, 
you know, brain tree payments is a great solution. Okay. But in, in particular, this uh, retailer, they could uh, use Google Instant Buy and then have their own payment processor or Braintree, Braintree process the payments. So long as they have a payment processor like yes. Braintree in place, then they're um, well, encouraged to use Instant Buy uh, yeah. and will receive, will be able to take Google Wallet. Yeah. Um, to, to clarify a little bit for uh, people who are not familiar how Google Instant Buy works, uh, customers could use Google Wallet to purchase your physical goods. Uh, however, you as a merchant, uh, we will not be processing the payments for you. Instead, we will give you a virtual one-time uh, credit card that you will need then to charge with your payment processor. So it's very convenient because you have access to uh, our large user base and all the um, customers who are using Google Wallet. However, there's an extra step which is uh, actually gives you more flexibility. You will be able to charge the credit card directly with your preferred payment processor and then you know use the vast um, majority of APIs available to do additional post processing that are available from your payment processor so yeah, I think it's good good to point out you know the, the benefit here too is order processing payouts it, you know Google's no longer involved there yes which sort of makes things a little bit simpler for the merchant yeah so a very important point thanks you for clarifying all right one more question related to payment options. The question is, as a provider of e-learning training courses, where Google Checkout is our primary payment option, what options do we have once Google Checkout ceases? Our ability to receive payments simply expires, or do we move to Google Wallet? So from the question, it sounds like currently you are selling digital content or digital goods and you're using one of the Google Checkout APIs, probably um, digital the digital delivery API. Um, I think we addressed this in a previous question and in the slides. The best solution for you is to consider migrating to an API that is specifically designed for digital goods. On the Google Wallet side, we have Google Wallet for digital goods, which will offer you similar capabilities and will also do the processing for you. Alternatively, you can shop around and uh, there are quite a few good um, solutions out there. Um, again, I'm pointing to Braintree, which has a nice uh, digital good solution. Um, so there are options for you, but you will have to move off the Google Checkout API in the six month time frame we gave you. Okay. one. Additional question, which is also API related, so I will take this one as well. Uh, which API provided by Google proves best in the scenario where the merchant needs to provide facility for subscription-based payment and also support modifying subscriptions and give a postback call with every recurrent billing? Uh, sounds like a very particular and more complex case you have here. Uh, so we don't know exactly the specifics of your business, but talking generally about subscriptions, uh, we do have options and we can also recommend to you um, other possible solutions. So depending on the complexity of your app and uh, the platform where you're selling the subscriptions, uh, you can have um, Android in-app billing, which uh, offers subscriptions. You can charge directly from within your uh, native Android app. Uh, on the web, we have Google for Digital Goods, which has a subscription component, and you can uh, also switch to that one. And of course, there are third parties, uh, and we mentioned it before, uh, Braintree has a recurrent billing solution. You can switch to that one as well. Mm -hmm. So again, um, look around and choose the best API that fits your particular case and the complexity uh, of your situation. All right, are we done with APIs? <laughs> uh, okay, let's take a question that's not API related. What will happen to my merchant ratings after the Google shutdown? So I think, Michael, you're the best to answer that. Sure. Um, so Google ratings primarily apply uh, or are used in Google Shopping, mm -hmm. and they have a life of one year. So as ratings stop, they will live out their, I guess, lifespan for mm -hmm. the rest of the year and then will begin to fall off. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have other ratings that feed into that system, uh, biz rate, price grabber, um, and those will continue to be 
if that is the Google Shopping System. Okay, so your ratings will be available for one year, and then you know once checkout is out, they will go away. Yep. All right. Uh, okay, another API and subscription question. So that will be me. The question is, how can I maintain my customer subscriptions after Google Checkout is closed? So if you're using the Google Checkout subscription API, that API will go away in six months. So you will have to move off the subscription, the Checkout subscriptions API to another uh, platform, to another equivalent subscription solution. We do, if you're selling digital goods, we, our services, we do have the Google Wallet for Digital Goods API, which uh, is a good replacement. Um, if you're doing this on mobile, let's say on Android uh, native apps, then we have Google in-app billing. Any other scenarios or combinations of the two, um, you can use both of them or you can consider third parties like Braintree. So somehow a similar and a repeat answer to a previous question, uh, but the main point is you will have to migrate your existing customers to a new subscription platform and re restart the subscriptions. Yeah. I might add that if you have questions about this, feel free to call our number and we can help you through that process. Yes, so uh, make sure you note down the contact information. Now rewind uh, the video and it's, uh, it's, it's also in the it's help in center. In the slide and it's also in the help center. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Justin. All right, one next question is um, about the mobile experience. So the question is, last year Google Checkout stopped serving mobile optimized pages. What is the best way to have a mobile optimized checkout experience on my mobile web app? So the important thing to note here is that it is a mobile web app. Uh, so Mike, I think you, you sure. know more about this. So we built Google Wallet Instant Buy to be a beautiful experience on mobile. Um, it, for that reason, it's, it's easing checkout both in-app mm -hmm. and, and on a mobile site. But again, you know, can't emphasize this point enough, it, it, merchants must have ability to process their own credit cards to be eligible for this tool. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for mobile and have that ability, um, have a PCI compliant credit card processor, then this is definitely a solution for you. Mm -hmm. So Instant Buy, it's a nice replacement that works as well on both uh, your desktop and your mobile web. Absolutely. And the experience is seamless. So if you have a web store, then you can have your customers uh, buy either on in the browser, on the desktop, or from their mobile phone. And the experience will be seamless. Exactly. All right. OK, one more for Mike. <laughs> uh, it's an API-related question, but you are the best to answer it. And the question is, when might the Instant Buy API be generally available, even just for Sandbox? Sure, so we're opening Sandbox to uh, a limited beta soon, in mm -hmm. the next couple weeks. Um, as soon as we really have, have felt that out and made sure we have a great experience for all users, mm -hmm. we'll open it up publicly. Great. And we'll make sure anyone who fills out our, um, uh, our interest form at getinstantbuy.withgoogle.com can, we'll, we'll be informed of um, all of these steps as they take place. Great, so that's great news for developers and people who want to try Instant Buy. We have a play, uh, sandbox to play with. And uh, do we have, uh, so it's get instant buy. Get dot instant buy dot with, with google.com. Google com. And there's a sign up form, just go there. So it's a really easy URL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, questions keep coming. Um, all right, Mike, you're, you're on, on a roll, so I'll give this one to you. Sure. So the question is, will there be a new merchant center for merchants using Google Wallet for the Digital Goods API? If there is, will there be a way to support cancellation of subscriptions, refunds, and chargebacks? And the answer is yes. We have great yeah. news on this front. Um, so we've rolled out a new merchant center. Uh, it's actually for purely in-app merchants, or excuse me, for purely digital goods merchants, it's already uh, being used. We're rolling it out to Android right now. Mm -hmm. And that includes um, um, a subscriptions orders details page. Mm -hmm. So before you'd have to backtrack all the way through the Merchant Center to find the original subscription in yeah. order to cancel that order. Now all of the subscription information is housed on one order details page. So you can see 
all of the charges made through the months or years and cancel it uh, if need be right away. Yeah, yeah, I can vouch for that for from a ease of use uh, point of view, the new Merchant Center is much better than the Google, the equivalent Google Checkout Merchant Center for subscriptions. Absolutely. Uh, it's so much easier to see where the subscription is coming, how to cancel it, how to refund. Yeah, so definitely it's there. Uh, if you're a digital goods API user or merchant, you already have it, and it's going to be rolling out to Android merchants as we speak. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Next question, API question, so I will take it. The question is, will the entire checkout API be retired? There are some checkout APIs in the level two, which is order processing, that seems useful for other Google Wallet APIs that are lacking such features, such as uh, cancellation uh, and notification callbacks, notification history queries, so on and so forth. And this is a very good question and a very good point. Um, and it clearly, uh, this developer is uh, using the level two APIs, which uh, are complex APIs, and is looking to do post-order processing and some very complex uh, operations. Um, the entire, to answer the question, the entire checkout API will go away. So if you are if you are using any of those APIs, you will need to find a replacement depending on the particular API you're switching to. Um, the good news is that we will be rolling out new APIs, new replacement for this uh, before checkout is uh, completely retired. So you will be able to seamlessly transition to a similar experience um, on your server side and make your life yeah. much in easier. In particular, the Android Play developers, there's uh, one in the works right now and it will shortly be released. Great, great. So good news for Android developers. Uh, if you're using any of the existing checkout APIs, you will soon have a replacement. All right, are we done with API questions? <laughs> uh, okay, one that's not an API question. As a nonprofit, how can we continue to accept donations through Google Wallet? So Justin. Yeah, yeah. so this is a good question. Um, Google Checkout will unfortunately be uh, completely turning off support of donations after November 20th. Um, so if you're either a 501c3 needing to do donations or if you're a political um, group needing to do contributions that way, mm -hmm. uh, we, we suggest you get a, a different processor. Braintree actually does support both of those use cases. If you would like the buyers to be able to use Google Wallet to pay for that, you can use Google Instant Buy, mm -hmm. and that way we can provide the, the one-time use card, and then you can process it through Braintree or any other processor that you would like. Great. Okay, Justin, your turn. Another question for you. The question is about uh, worldwide availability of checkout. And it's, um, will you offer a new API for Google Wallet worldwide? Current Google Checkout API cannot be used from most countries other than US and UK. Yes, yeah, so this is a very good question. The answer kind of depends on how you are using uh, Google for payments. If you are an internal, do, uh, if you're using digital, selling digital goods on Google, for instance, through Google Play, mm -hmm. we, ha we support 161 buyer countries, so quite a few, and we have 32 seller countries. Um, if you're a Google Wallet for digital goods uh, merchant, we have 18 seller countries, mm -hmm. uh, nine, nine different currencies, and also 161 buyer countries. If you are using Google Instant Buy, um, since that is a limited beta at this point, it only supports US buyers and US sellers, and we're actively looking at how do we um, roll that out to additional countries as the beta finishes mm -hmm. up. So I, I think the point of uh, your answer is that um, Using some of the new Google APIs, you actually ha actually have access to more uh, options uh, and more buyers and more currencies yeah. than you would have had. Yeah, Google out. Checkout, for instance, yeah. only supported two seller countries, US yes. and UK. Yeah. And if you are a digital merchant switching yeah. to Google Wallet for digital goods, for instance, that would be um, 18 seller countries. Yes. So you'd be expanding your, your footprint of where you can actually sell. Yeah. And instant buy will gain more traction and you'll have more options there too. Okay, next question, it's about the Merchant Center. The question is, will it be possible with the new Wallet Merchant Center to sell apps on Google Play from more countries that are now supported by Google Checkout? 
so related to the previous question, I guess, but Mike, you know more about this? Sure. Uh, we're evaluating and expanding to new countries all the time, uh, but don't have anything new to announce at this time. Okay. So we're still having the 18 countries and lots of yeah. currencies, and we're adding new countries Additional all the countries time. Yeah. Constantly. Okay. So we're getting close to the end. Uh, one more question, and uh, I will take this one. And the question is about the Google Checkout Store gadget. What is the transition path for users of Google Checkout Store gadget? So the Checkout Store gadget offers the nice one-stop solution uh, for merchants with um, no or very limited uh, programming skills. Uh, and you know it was very popular and used by quite a few merchants. Uh, once Google Checkout is retired, the best option for such merchant will be Shopify, which offers discounted plans for uh, again a one in all hosted storefront. So the transition and experience from a merchant perspective and managing your store should be similar. So I encourage everyone who uses uh, the checkout store gadget to have a look at Shopify. All right, so with this, I think we got to the end of the questions. If there are questions that we miss, we'll try to address them in further um, office hour session. Um, thank you, Justin, and thank, thank you, you Michael, for, yeah, for uh, uh, providing additional details about uh, the Google retirement plan. and. Uh, Please contact us with any issues, any questions, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye. Yep.